Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at GoB. Now, GoB is an add-on plugin that you can use from Blender to ZBrush just in case you want to get the best of both worlds. So today we're going to take a look at how you can install this and also a couple of things that you need to know about once you start working with this tool. So the very first thing is you can go over to the link in the description, download this tool, and then you can proceed to unzipping this. Now, once you unzip this, take the Blender folder that exists inside the GoBe, you know, uh, folder and take it over to the user public pixel logic go z apps so if this is the first time you're doing this and you open up zbrush or if zbrush is open by this time you'll probably not be able to see it so my advice is close zbrush and open zbrush as admin now once you open zbrush as admin you can now go over to the preference and go directly to where you have the gozi now directly inside the gozi you're going to notice that there is a section called path to blender and this would help you locate blender and you know get the exe file for blender which it is going to be able to read from now if you jump back into blender it is also quite easy for you to install this one now all you need to do is go over to edit go to preference and install now once you click on install locate the zip file or you know you can locate the you know python file and with that you can simply load this and get the gozi plugin working for you now once you have the gozi plugin you know right here there are certain things that you need to check you need to first of all make sure that you have the polygroup being imported as vertices you can also check you know creating material from polypaints if this is also something interesting for you at the same time if you want to invert your axis when you get to import things you can also do that although this has its ups and downs and we're also going to take a look at that so for example let's go ahead and create you know suzanne the monkey and try this tool out because the minute you install this you would notice that there is an export and also an import button and this would help you export your files directly from blender over to zbrush and at the same good time you can choose to import your files directly from zbrush back to blender now if you're also working with zbrush and in most cases once you hit the gozi it actually takes you over to a different place at this point you can now start making some very good decisions by clicking on the r button by the side of the gozi close to the all and visible and this would help you reset gozi so that you would know exactly the, the software that is the primary software for you now with this done you can now export your model directly into zbrush from blender and you can make a couple of tweaks so for example we're just going to make a couple of tweaks to suzanne you know distort her a little bit and then we're going to also add a very good you know subdivision now with that done i'm also going to go ahead and you know import that by simply hitting on the import button and we have Suzanne right here. Now we bring in Suzanne right here. We would also like to make a couple of, you know, changes. Let's just play with the modifiers and see if this one will work out. So for the modifiers, I'm also going to go over to the modifier section and I will use a very, very, you know, uh, smooth deformation modifier. Now with the smooth deformation modifier, we're going to select bend and just, you know, make a couple of changes to this. Now, if you get this and ship this over to ZBrush, for the very first time, you might probably not notice that there is a change. Now, the reason is because there is no new vertex that has been applied to this and that is why there is no change. So in case you're having these problems, this is exactly why you're having this. You can do every single thing you want and at the same time, you will definitely not notice anything. Now, for you to actually get some cool results you can go in and cheat zbrush and blender just a little bit now the cool thing with this is with your blender open you can jump into the edit mode and with that let's just simply create a very simple cube now once i create this cube and choose to launch this back into zbrush you would notice that of course it is going to launch this back into zbrush so this is a very cool trick so in case you want to get the deformations that you have from blender and ship them over to zbrush this is how you get to do it now directly in zbrush you can now choose to you know set these things as different polygroups the, the ones you don't want and get some awesome you know tools going for you now one thing which i've also noticed that doesn't really work out for you know the gobi for now is the face set doesn't seem to be implemented yet so for the face set there is no implementation for that one yet so i still think it's something that would come up later in time with a couple of improvements that will be done to this tool so far so good this tool has actually been pretty pretty cool and 
if you're also thinking about bringing in tools directly from zbrush by simply using the you know gozi and you already have that invert up turned on you might be having some issues now for you to actually go ahead and fix that one you need to go over to the edit and go back to the preference go over to the gobi plugin and then you need to check off invert this is just the only way you can get this one working and on the other hand if you also want to go ahead and start playing with the textures you can simply choose to use this and get good with that so with our grid here i'm just going to go ahead and hit control one so we can add some subdivision go over to the subdivision and let's simply make this about four so four looks good apply that and then we can jump over to the sculpting side so directly inside the sculpting let's press f so that we can reduce our brush size and we can use this to start making those you know pretty cool deformation of course these deformations are not things that you can get easily in zbrush and this is why a tool like this can come in extremely handy so you can use the best of both worlds and you know get some pretty cool stuff going for you so let's say you're done with this and you would like to layer a couple of things on top or you want to do some cool magic with this directly in zbrush you can now simply export this directly from the sculpting section and ship this over to zbrush now we are here in zbrush and you can see the beautiful stuff that you have right here so with zbrush here you can start making some extra adjustments if there are things that you want to do so things that has to do with maybe you're considering creating a couple of extra layers so i don't know who would ever do this but let's just simply go ahead and do it so from here i can hold down shift and control and simply switch this over to the slice rectangle so i'm just going to create a simple slice right here and if you hold down shift and f you'll be able to see that we've gone through to create a polygroup now polygroup is something that is not yet transferable in terms of what you can ship from zbrush over to blender but there is still you know a couple of cool things that you can still do with this tool right here so with this now i can also jump back and go over to the geometry and within the geometry we can have some cool fun playing with some stuff so i can go over to the edge and choose to make some group loops which is pretty interesting so you can start seeing those things here just in case you're trying to make you know patches and stuff this is very interesting to see and maybe you can choose to do some panel loops all right so this one looks good too so you might also want to you know preserve and keep this for whatever reason that you are trying to make this stuff so with something like this you can still choose to you know pick up some other brushes that you can use to tweak let's reduce the draw size and with that i can simply start moving things around this is just some very interesting things that you can use this for and in terms of texture painting you can still proceed to you know texture paint this particular tool so in this case what we're going to do is instead of painting this and since we already have a tool like this we can go over to this part where we have poly paint and we can choose to get our poly paint from our poly groups all right so if we turn this off and simply say poly paint from poly group we'll be able to have a poly paint directly from the groups and with all of these beautiful things done you can now easily take this back to blender so for this now you can either open up blender there are two ways to do this and simply hit on import which would go through and import whatever that you have from zbrush over to blender or you can get this going by going over to zbrush and then you can click on the go z so this is going to take everything that you have from here and ship this back to blender now you would notice that we simply have this so even if we go to shading and here you notice we don't have any of this and if you're having these problems then of course you can always refer back to the preference and make sure that you have you know ignore create material turned on to from poly paint so once this is turned on and you jump back to zbrush and with this right now if you simply send this back to blender you would now notice that directly in blender you now have the tool and it has the color attached to it so you can choose to make some changes make some paintings and also get some very interesting stuff going for you so this is what we have right now in you know in blender and we can jump back to the shading just to make sure that we see this and if you're also thinking about creating some more you know complex stuff or maybe you're thinking about creating some pretty cool clothes which i think we should try so let's just jump back here 
and hold down shift and a to create a brand new cube so this cube looks a little bit too big and i'm just going to also go ahead and scale this down so the next thing which we're going to do is just simply create a grid and with this grid we're going to do a very simple cloth simulation so if you want to get into cloth simulation there is a plugin known as simply cloth which i've been using i already talked about how you can get started with this on the channel so you can go through and check this out and see if it works for you we scale this to create you know a very cool cloth you can pick from the presets and get some things going self collision is also applied to this one and once this is done we'll go ahead and add suzanne now the reason why we're creating all of these things is because i would like to actually show you guys a very neat you know a way of getting your entire tool set from blender over to zebra so if you go through and use the macu selection to select the entire object and export this to zebrush zebrush would get these tools as individual tools and not as sub tools that exist as one object all right so if you want to get all of these tools to come together as one object in zebrush what you need to do is to go back to blender and make sure you grab all of the objects selected then you go over to the object section and hit join now if you join this it becomes one entire mesh and if you ship this over to zebrush you'll be able to have all of these things there from there you can choose to go over to the poly group and make these individual groups and from here you can separate them you can add some effects if you want make some changes play with this tool as much as you want and get things going so this is definitely going to be about it if you want to get you know started with working with zbrush and blender side by side gobi is the best tool for you and i guess we did cover some of the issues you'll be having and also some of the problems that you might kind of encounter and how you can you know conquer these things so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section. If you want to download this, link is going to be in the description. If you want to also join the Blender forum where these things are being talked about and how you can get going with this, you can also go over to the link in the description and get going with this. And also, before we go, a huge shout out to Jose Consico for making this tool and making this plugin available as there is no official ZBrush 2 Blender plugin that is available right now. On the other hand, I'm also going to give a huge shout out to Daniel Grauer for getting my attention towards the updates and also the cool things that you can now achieve with this brand new tool. And with that said, I would like to know what you guys think about all of this stuff in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, then of course you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.